Hey, well, Michelle, right now, notice the one thing that's been changing, that pressure continues to come down. Hurricane hunters were in that northeast quad, and they found winds of about 107 miles an hour just a, a short time ago. So that's something that uh, we're going to continue to, to watch. You can see the, the flight there from the Air Force plane tonight uh, just a short time ago. 963 millibars, 107 mile an hour winds. Everything continues to progress uh, closer to the major hurricane status, which will likely happen, if not at the 11 o'clock advisory certainly by daybreak tomorrow and then we'll see the continued intensification as we head on into Wednesday as we move into late Wednesday night and Thursday upper level wind shear becomes a big time problem for this storm it'll do one of two things a potentially push it over an inland of central Florida and begin to weaken it for two reasons it comes on shore or because the upper level steering winds are so strong it begins to rip it apart as Stu just mentioned everybody is in a watch or a warning uh, we'll have to wait and see if Sumter County is upgraded to a uh, hurricane warning at the 11 o'clock advisory Polk will likely be uh, upgraded to potentially a hurricane watch there some of the forecast winds have uh, come up a little bit in some of the computer models Alex will talk a little bit more about that that straight ahead. Eastern side there in the yellow, we do have those tropical storm watches. There's that front now to the north. You can see the winds beginning to come across the uh, northern Gulf of Mexico out of the west southwest as this feature is dropping off towards the south. So we'll have to watch that. That could make a tremendous change in what happens here in central Florida as we go down the road. 500 miles wide here. This will continue to live northward. You can see the heavy downpours down to the south. Models tonight pretty much very similar to what we saw early in the day. Two camps one along I-4. The other, again, up and down the western side of the peninsula. Intensity forecast still CAD 3 to CAD 4. Last but not least, check out this forecast here. We showed this to you earlier. The graph is not budging from what it was saying earlier. Off towards uh, Wednesday afternoon and evening, you can see that track beginning to veer more towards the right, meaning the potential for some more significant weather across the interior of central Florida and maybe not so much the western side of the peninsula. With more on the winds right now, here's Alex. Hey there, Tony, and take a look at the winds here. Something I want to note with this graphic as well. It's not good to just focus on the cone itself. If you think, hey, I'm outside the cone now, there's not going to be impacts. It's just not the case. The cone shows the possibility of where the center of the storm could be. And not only the center, but notice the winds here extend well outside of that center as well. Uh, the cur current forecast has a Category 4 storm right here around 530. But look how far ahead of the storm those hurricane force winds extend already into Tampa. Tropical storm force winds in the yellow already in the Sumter, Polk and into Southern Lake County, also edging into Osceola and Orange County uh, by around Wednesday evening. By Thursday morning, Sumter County now starting to feel the effects of those hurricane force winds potentially. And then as we go into Friday morning by one o'clock, starting to shrink that storm down as it continues to weaken, but still dealing with tropical storm force winds across much of central Florida. So as we go over the next two days, not only are we going to be dealing with those high winds and the flooding rains, but look at the severe risk now from this uh, the Storm Prediction Center here. Tomorrow, Tuesday, starting to see an isolated risk for storms as those bands begin to work on in. Again, the main risk is going to be tornadoes with us on that northeast side of the storm. By Wednesday, notice the yellow here. All of us underneath that scattered risk for severe weather. And again, that could increase as we go into tomorrow as again, we track more and more in the way of those severe winds starting to move on in. Take a look at the future rainfall. Very impressive from our in-house model run, the latest one run here, showing upwards of 20 inches of rain in spots across central Florida, 24 to 30 inches in spots as well. Coming up, we're going to take another look at some of those wind potentials and that track in just a few minutes.